All right, so in Maya, what we're going to do is drag that texture here. And this is Hypershade. It's Window Rendering Editor's Hypershade. Okay. Then you go to the Textures tab. Okay, on my hard drive I have this. I'm just going to click and drag it over to the Texture tab. Just like that. And we're going to make a new material. Now, with this texture, I'm going to middle mouse button, click and drag it over to default. Just like that. And we're going to call this checks. All right. Now, Another thing we're going to do is kind of look at it at a very beginning understanding of what the UV range is and how we can apply the checker to a box. So let's take a box, hit six on the keyboard, right click, sign an existing material, checks. Okay, so here's checks. Now, UV range. Under Window, UV Texture Editor, you have the UV window. I have this on dim so you can see the UVs. Also, you can take this texture and uncheck it or check a different texture depending on what textures you have in there. So if you had another texture in place, you could toggle between checkers and no checkers. Okay. Now, in here, this is the first range of UVs. Um, together, it's a it's a zero to one range. Positive, up in the corner, and this is the most used UV range right here. Now, this the rest of the range is there, and what happens? It just repeats over and over and over again. Take for example this. You know, I have a lot of space in here, and that's what the one thing you got to know about UVs is the more space that you have not being used is all kinds of resolution that you could be potentially using. Take this for example, when I zoom in on this box, you know, that's got pretty good resolution. Um, it starts to get a little fuzzy right here, but not too bad. If I was to take the UVs, marquee select them, and make this bigger to the point that one face takes up the full UV range, so what I'm going to do is go like this, drag it down, it starts getting a little bit crisper and a lot more 128 bit squares fit on this box okay now that is that's what we're aiming for we're aiming for the fact that we want high resolution detail on a mesh but there's one thing that you got to consider and that is this range of uvs we have a limit to it right here but it does go on forever and the problem with that is only certain programs abide by the same law. Let's say if I ported this over to a game engine. Well, if I ported it over to the Unreal game engine, it actually follows the same rules. Uh, the range goes on forever. Okay. If I ported it over to Unity game engine, it doesn't go on forever. It's very... Uh, very reliant on the first range of UVs here in the corner. ZBrush, same. It's, uh, ZBrush does go outside the UV range, but anytime you generate a map, it only abides by the first range of UVs. So that's our issue now. It's like, where are we going with this stuff? Uh, so what I'm going to do is try to abide by the first range of UVs. 
it's very easy to go outside that range any day of the week you know an artist can go outside the range but to stay within the range is a much harder thing so if i teach you the hardest thing first i'm sure you know just by nature of the beast you'll be able to get the other half of that so with this box if i just did something like this let's say i take the box go into object mode and create automatic mapping technically what this does is make all the that that T formation that I had earlier was limiting my space okay now I have bigger squares so the bigger the square or bigger the face on the UV range equals higher the detail now there is another thing you have to consider the other thing is seams okay. if you look at this now uh, it, it looks okay um, but if you see right here to here it doesn't really match up too well so the, this uniform mesh that you used to stretch very nicely and uniformed across the surface does not so where you see that there's a seam there now on um, non-organic forms you know the seam issue isn't too bad of a thing but if you get a normal map stretching across the seam you'll find that the normal map is distorted a little bit across the seam just a tad so this is a well laid out but it present, presents problems later on if I did have a normal map attached to this. So the second rule uh, besides staying on the square is try to limit your seams down to a usable thing. Okay. Alright so let's look at what that means. Uh, let's say I grab this edge. Here is the move and sew button. It's in the UV texture editor window. It's this one right here. and I just moved that and sewed it right into place now you can see this face right here jumped over to this face alright if I grab UV I can right click and go to shell by holding control so I grab one solitary UV control right click to shell that allows me to bring this over here so you can see it a little bit better and basically I can just move and sew move and sew move and sew and move and sew just like that and there's my T formation could I attach anything else well what if I did this okay now there's no seam there but if you look at the pattern here it is very jacked up and that's what the advantage of these squares do. Um, you're trying to utilize the space and keep a uniform texture. So all the squares should be square. If I need to get this back on the map, I just simply grab the UVs and go to Polygons, Layout, Square Box. And what I like to do is state my spacing presets. So I'm going to use a spacing of 2048 and I also like to take off rotate so I put that to none hit apply now jump back onto the the first quadrant here and you can see it nicely stretches across the box okay so now that's the 101 stuff please meet me in the next video where we kind of look at not the box but an, another odd shape how do you get it a uniform pattern going across um, a shape that isn't a box.